What's up guys, ViperFV here, and today we have the Iashin Lal 5 style quadcopter from Iashin. Uh, Banggood sent this to me for review, um, and really it actually has quite a competition at its current price point of around $230, um, but this thing is on, currently on sale for about $180 US. Um, it might be a little different depending on what area of the world you are, so leave a comment down below uh, to sh tell me uh, pretty much what this is in your native currency. Um, but um, what we're going to be doing is doing a full review of it and uh, breaking down all the tech and the specs of this quadcopter to see if, like I said, if it's worth your investment and your purchase. Um, I'll leave a link to this down below. It will be an affiliate link. This helps support the channel tremendously. Uh, so if you want to help support the channel and me, go ahead and use that link. Even if you don't want to pick up this quadcopter and you want to purchase something else, go ahead and use that link anyway, and I'll still get credit for your purchase. Uh, but let's go ahead and go over to the bench and uh, give this a review. So let me go over really quick what you uh, get in the box when you purchase one of these. You don't get these white props. These are actually some that, honestly, I just got to match the GoPro a little bit and make it like a cool little thumbnail, honestly. <laughs> but uh, when you get in the box, you'll get these Raystar Tornado props, which are actually pretty decent props. Um, I just, like I said, put them on these ones on just for looks, honestly. Uh, but these actually are pretty durable, so not too bad. Um, comes with some extra zip ties, comes with an extra battery pad if you wanted to mount the battery on the bottom. Yes, you can mount this battery on the top or the bottom, depending on which way you want to um, fly it around. Um, comes with some little carbon fiber wrenches, and then this little carbon fiber, I guess, fake pistol thing. And then we have this these gum gummies and some extra hardware. That's pretty much all it comes with. Um, and then also comes with, I think, that one actually come with instructions, actually. So it actually is kind of confusing if you don't know what you're doing. Um, so let me put this to the side. Get rid of this. And then we have our quadcopter here. Um, like I said, it also does come with the VTX antenna. So you pretty much get everything but the GoPro mount that you'll see. The GoPro mount you do have to buy separate. I'll leave a link to the GoPro mount below um, if you want to pick one of those up, if you want to pick up one of these quadcopters. I'm going to take these props off real quick, and then we're going to kind of go over just the, the tech and the specs of the quadcopter before we give it a flight. All right, so before we get to the flight, the quadcopter we have here does have a Cadex Rattel right here in the front. It's a micro camera. We do have an F405 flight controller with a 50 amp B-Heli 32 ESE that goes up to 6S voltage, which is especially important if you're going to be using it on a 6S quad. Um, we do have a 800 milliwatt VTX antenna that does do smart audio, so you can adjust it from 25 milliwatts all the way up to 800 milliwatts. Um, and then we have these 2307 motors here on the end. Uh, they do not have the KV listed, but I believe these are around 1800 KV. Um, so that's about right for a 6S quadcopter. Um, and then we do have this GoPro mount, like I said, this does not come with the, you have to buy that separately. Um, then we have an XT60 here. Uh, so pretty much it's real basic, um, but if you look in here, it's real clean how they built it up. Um, it has the camera wired right to the flight controller. And then we have the um, VTX stacked on top of the flight controller there on the back of the stack. Um, and then we also do have our VTX underneath there on the little 3D printed piece there. And then we also do have our antenna. And then you can just go ahead and put a little screwdriver or something down there. And just hit the bind button. Really, really simple to go ahead and um, set up your quadcopter and bind it to your radio. Um, so let's go ahead and give it a flight and uh, see how it does. So I want to be frank with you guys. I actually tested it on three different setups on Betaflight. Um, so this is actually the initial flight. This is how it comes out of the box um, with just my arm switch and everything else set up. No PIDs, nothing changed. And um, it does fly okay. It did do know some little jitters, um, especially when I do flips and rolls and um, maybe hard stick deflections. Um, so what I actually went ahead and did is I checked in beta flight. It actually was set to eight, um, 8K, 2K, which is really unheard of, especially for an F4 flight controller. Um, so here in a moment, I'm going to go ahead and switch over. And this is me switching it over just from the 8K, 8K. It actually did improve a lot. Um, but what actually happened is I started noticing doing this is that it was starting to overshoot. So if I do a flip or a roll, um, you can kind of notice that it's, kind of not really crisp and it's kind of sloppy um, so went back to the drone bar board and ch checked in the firmware for Betaflight and went ahead and flashed Betaflight 4.1 enabled the RPM filtering um, everything that I could on this quadcopter pretty much the 
everything that 4.1 can do. Um, and 4.2 was not out as of yet when I went ahead and flashed this. Um, so you'll definitely see me doing a future video on some tips and tricks on the LAL from Iashin, uh, especially since 4.1 does look really good. And there's probably no reason why you shouldn't be uh, using the RPM filtering since you have the capabilities to do it since you have the BHELI 32 ESCs. Um, so let's go ahead and get over to the bench and uh, give you my final thoughts. So I've had a few weeks with the Iashin Lao style and I'm really, really liking the quadcopter, honestly. Um, now, it does come with Betaflight 4.0 flashed already. I mean, that could change in future iterations of this quadcopter. Uh, but the one I had had Betaflight 4.0 on it, disappointingly. I didn't have any RPM filter filtering or anything enabled on it. So that was kind of, um, you know, just your kind of Iashin, just kind of just knocking a whole bunch of these quadcopters out, pay, copying, pasting CLIs of a whole bunch of quadcopters to get, you know, sales. But what they actually did do here is actually build themselves a really, really nice quadcopter. It has the BHELI 32 ESC in it. Uh, it goes with the 50 amps and it's 6S. Um, now your 4S version will have a different ESC than that one, um, but it does have the F404 flight controller, has an 800 milliwatt VTX, um, and it has pretty much all the caboodle that you would pretty much want in a quadcopter. Um, so you can go ahead and remotely change your VTX channels using your goggles or even maybe a Lewis script if you want to. Um, it has pretty much all the little everything that you really would want in a quadcopter, especially a freestyle quadcopter. You can mount the, the battery on the top or on the bottom if you so desire. Um, has the little 3D printed parts, especially on the arms. Um, I do notice that if you don't use the 3D printed parts and you do hit like a tree or something, you do have a risk of breaking off these little corners of the... Um, arms off because they're just not really reinforced that well but it does they do protect the motor pretty well i do want to add that there was other some things that i did take notice when i got this quadcopter um, when i first took it out for a flight it actually missed one of the bolts on the motors actually came out so that just tells me that i needed to go ahead and lock tight all the motors and actually give them a good tight because a lot of them were actually real loose especially where the 3d printed parts were i guess they just kind of put it evenly where the 3d printed part kind of touched so they didn't really cl clamp it down that well um so Definitely, if you're going to pick one of these up, get some Loctite and uh, Loctite those bolts. Um, also on the frame, especially on the bottom plate, um, and also on, the top plate was fine. The bottom plate needed uh, some screw, you know, some tightening of the screws because they were actually loose as well. Um, but don't go ahead and uh, Loctite those because those are for the arms, and you don't want to, you know, have those vibrate loose. I mean, you can if you use the semi, not the permanent one, but the semi-permanent. Um, so they can come off, but I usually don't lock tight my arm stuff. I just usually just do the motors. Um, but yeah, so if you want to go and pick up one of these clock clouders, I'm going to be leaving a link down below. It is an affiliate link, help support the channel. Uh, so if you want to pick up one of these clock clouders, use that link, or if you want to purchase something else, uh, just use that link, and I still do get credit for your purchase. Uh, but this is Viper FPV, and I'll see you guys in a future video. Peace.